Hey guys, I am Abiola Yodili, LSWK Loss and Representative for the University of Abuja, and I was nominated by Miriam Aruna to discuss on the rule in the case of Ryland and Fletcher. So before I go into that, it's a tradition that will tell you a bit about ourselves. So I'm a 300 level law student in the University of Abuja. I currently hold some leadership positions like the Lord Advocates and the Advocacy Club, the PRO, the task club and the head of trials of the liberal chambers so i'm the third and last one in my family i'm a christian i come from for this state my hobbies include researching um drafting lego drafting chatting watching movies i know i don't like reading i know most persons believe that law students love reading well to every general way there's an exception and i am that exception so yeah i don't like reading so I'll be going right into the discussion. Generally, in the law of thought, for trespass to be established, there must be direct interference with the plaintiff's land as compared to nuisance. So the case of Ryland and Fletcher established the doctrine of strict liability in trespass in the law of thought. In the case, the defendants who were mill owners in a coal mining in a coal mining area constructed the reservoir on their land. Unfortunately, the reservoir broke and flooded the plate um, the reservoir broke broke and passed through a an abandoned coal mine and flooded the plaintiff's land, hence the suit. So in eighteen sixty five the trial courts held that they held in um, they ruled in favor of the defendants. The reason for doing so was because the defendants were ignorant of the abandoned coal mine and thus they were free of negligence. So the plaintiffs app um, appealed to the Exchequer Court who, who overruled the decision of the trial court and imposed um, strict liability on the defendants. Though the acts by the defendants did not fit into any existing um, theory in the law of thought it was neither trespass because there was no direct interference with the land of the plaintiff there was the land of the plaintiff and the defendants we are not adjoined so there was no direct interference and it was also not nuisance so in that case the gem justice co blackburn stated that a person who for his own purposes brings on his land collects or keeps anything which is likely to do mischief if it escapes, must keep it in at its peril. If it does not do so, it's prima facie answerable for any damage which is a consequence of its escape. So this assertion by Justice Koblagon of the court formed the rule in the case of Ryland and Fletcher. So basically, for instance, if I um, I am rearing cattle and then they escape and they get into someone else's land and it destroys something, then I am liable because I should have done the right thing. I should have put kept my um cattle in the right place and prevented it from escaping. So the respondents appealed to the respondents um appealed to the House of Lords. So the House of Lords affirmed the decision of the Exchequer Court and held that the and held that the um, the plaintiffs were in um, and held that the defendants were indeed liable for trespass. However, Justice Keynes, one of the judges, went on to limit the assertion, the rule, by Justice Cole Blackburn. He said that although Though, um, according to Justice Cole Blackburn, it is um, a person who for any purpose, meaning it could be for um, personal use or whatever. However, Justice Kane said that it should not be just for any of, for um, it should not be just for his own purposes. It should be that if the defendant, or if the person uses the land in a wrong way, in a non-natural way, when he uses the land in a way that is supposed to cause danger, or you know that if you don't use it the proper way, it will result in something else, then that person will be held 
liable. So basically, this is the rule in the case of Ryland and Fletcher. The case has actually aroused a lot of controversies. You can read up on it if you want to. It will make you understand the positions of various judges on the subject. So, I would be nominating Mia Baka Janwari from University of Portacos to discuss on international human rights treaties. I know it's a bit lengthy, so it should just be brief. It should mention the basic treaties and just highlight them a bit. So, shout out to LSWK and Lawson for an amazing initiative. And please stay tuned for the next diary session. Thank you.